Amen. Amen. I believe that God has brought us this morning. He has gathered us for a reason. Amen. Amen. When we gather, the purposes of God is fulfilled. Hallelujah. So I want us to be expectant as we gather that we will not gather in vain. We will leave the presence of God energized and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome our sister Christina Gan. Fresh. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap of it. We thank God for your life. Amen. That God has taken you and brought you back safely in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mister, how are you? You are fine. Amen. Let's welcome him to his beard. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. And all the time. So this morning, I want you to be expectant. I want you to open your heart. The word of God is a seed. Amen. Amen. And the word of God is always planted in the ground. And the ground is our heart. Amen. Amen. And the preparation of the ground determines how the seed will germinate and grow. Amen. Amen. So when the ground is prepared, the seed falls into that ground the seed grows and bears fruit. Amen. Amen. So that ground is your heart. So I want you to prepare your heart to receive the word of God. So that the word of God will fall into a good ground. Amen. Amen. A good ground is not hard. It's moist. Amen. Amen. And, and so we, we, can, we, can, we can create that environment for the seed in our heart. Amen. So that the seed will produce fruit and evidence in our lives. So this morning, I want you to prepare your heart to receive that word that will bring transformation, that will bring a new level that God wants to take you to. Amen. And so we want to thank the Lord for preparing his servant to bring us that word today, a word that will energize us and empower us for what he has called us to do. So let's stand on our feet as we welcome the servant of God. Let's Anytime that you don't find yourself in the spirit, it, it's an indication that maybe you are veering off. So we need to be sensitive to the voice of God, the voice of the spirit, and, and begin to see that, you know, this whole thing, it is not what we see on a physical level. It's something that is happening all around us in the realm of the spirit. Our eyes don't see, our physical eyes don't see. But we need to tune in so that we will have insight, understanding of the things that are happening. As a result of what I'm going to be talking about this morning, I want us to spend some time praying. And I want you to begin to connect yourself, with, uh, you know, into the realm of the spirit. Begin to connect your spirit man before God. My like pastor was saying, the word of the Lord needs to fall on fertile grounds. Now, the enemy is always very determined to attack the word of God at its source. Because when we are kept in the dark, when we are kept in the dark, he will have advantage over us. But we want to pray and come against any spirit that fights the word of God. That is why we have a free course in our lives. I've already got my confirmation. Mama Doc has read a scripture from Isaiah 59, verse 19. And that is part of the things that, you know, have been, uh, if you like, bubbling within my spirit. So I want you to pray for yourself this morning. And I want you to pray for everyone gathered here that the spirit will have its way. God's will will be done in the midst of us. I want you to pray that you will no longer be taken advantage of by the enemy. I want you to pray 
that his will, his perfect will will, 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 will come into manifestation in your life. Amen. And I want us to pray specifically, go on the offensive. Say to the kingdoms of darkness that you will not have a field's day anymore in any area of my life. You wouldn't have any advantage over me in any area of my life. Amen. We're talking about, you know, your marriage, your children, your, your family, your ministry. Any area of your life where it seems that the enemy is having advantage of, of, over you. I want you to pray that it shall be reversed. Amen. That Amen. shall not stand. Amen. For the scripture that Mama Doc has just quoted was that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard Amen. against every advances of the enemy. Look at it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. The oppression of the enemy, one of the oppressions of the enemy is that he comes in like a flood. The Bible says that he is the old dragon, the old serpent of old, the old serpent, the dragon. The dragon, you know, he, 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 he releases fire like a flood to devour its enemies. And we want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that the enemy has set in motion against your life, against our sons, against our communities, we are taking advantage of it. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice with me. Lift up your voice and go suffer. The enemy will not have any advantage over you. He will not win. He will not win. There is a raging battle in the realm of the spirit happening all around us. We shall not be victimized. We shall not be victimized. We shall be more than conquerors. We shall be victorious. Lift up your voice. Man, go sapa. Rapalobo, shantaria, tenimazaba. Riman, tenimako, yakabazaya. In the mighty name of Jesus and through the blood, we have been declared victorious. We have been declared victorious. We shall not die. We shall live to declare the works of the living God. We shall not die. Our children shall not die. Our houses shall not collapse. Ah, we shall not die. Our ministry will not die. Ah, the vision of God will not die. But we will live to the, the, declare the word of the Lord. Lift up your voice. My own Shanda Babahaya. Iparo Shantaria Tani Masaya. Akantaria Babo Shantaria Tani Masaya. Any advantage that the enemy seek to obtain, we are we rebuke him, we come against him in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not rejoice over me, rejoice not over me, my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, against the God of repentance that have been released. Rapamu Tanimasa, 
started off last week. Last week we were taken to Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 where God uh, announced 
an ongoing battle between the seed of the woman and then the serpent. So straight away, once man fell, after man fell, Bible says God came to the scene and then he made this particular announcement or proclamation that there will be an enmity placed between the seed of the woman and then the serpent. When the serpent gets you, there is something that the serpent is determined to do. To bruise your, your heel. And then he, 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 he talks about you, the seed of the woman, will also bruise the head of the serpent. So there was a contention that was announced right from the beginning. And even though that we call ourselves believers that have been saved, we have been delivered, we've been redeemed, we have been justified, we have been reconciled back to our God. It does not mean that once you become a believer, that is the end of the contention. This contention was announced in Genesis. And when you read through all of scripture, and you even come to Revelation, the contention still goes on. The Bible says that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits. So in other words, when Paul wrote to the, the believers in Ephesus, he was drawing the attention to the fact that yes, you have been saved by grace, but the fact that you have been saved does not mean that you know the, the, the end of the war has come. He reminded them that I want you to be aware of what is raging in the realm of the spirit. Because there is a contention that is going on in the realm of the spirit which your eyes, your physical eyes cannot see. And he advised them that the way that you can be able to stand in this particular battle, in this warfare, is for you to put on the whole armor of God. But that's not what I'm going to be talking about this morning. What I want to draw your attention to is the fact that because you are a believer, you are embroiled in an ongoing battle. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, there is a contention going on in the realm of the spirit. And the earlier you are able to understand this, the better it will be for you because there are some keys that God has provided his sons and daughters to use in order to gain advantage all the time. Amen. Over the works of the enemy. So even the scripture that we just heard, when the, spirit, uh, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy. Yes, yeah, so there would be like a barricade, a wall, against every advances of the enemy. But you know what? The Bible does not absolve believers from not engaging in the battle. That's the reason why it says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you cannot prevent the enemy from coming in. You cannot prevent him from coming in because he will always be seeking an opportune time to attack the believer. But we are not afraid of what he will do. Why? Because there is a means through which we can be able to stand or withstand against anything that he uses. Amen. The Bible says that for we are not ignorant about the devices of the crafty. One thing that the enemy always desires is to keep the people of God in, in ignorance, in the dark. He, he, he actually uh, is so happy all the time for people of God to say that, you know what, I am a modern day believer or I'm a new covenant believer. I don't believe in any of the things that the enemy does and all of those things. You know, you hide behind the fact that, oh, because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross of Calvary, uh, you, you know, you don't have to bother yourself about the activities of the enemy because he's defeated and all of that. 
Normally, the enemy wants us to have that mindset. Because once you have that mindset, you rest on your laurels. You don't apply the means through which God has provided a means of victory over him all the time. And you begin to neglect all of those things. And before you are aware, he goes to and fro seeking for somebody to do that. Seeking for somebody whom he is going to release his blood against. And if you are not cautious, if you are not standing, by the time that he comes, you will see that you are going to be overtaken. Maybe as a believer, you are not going to be fully possessed or fully dominated by him, but there will be certain areas that he is going to gain advantage over you. I want us to look at this particular scripture. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation. Revelation, chapter 12. Revelation, chapter 12. From verse 7. The Bible says that, And war broke out in the heavens. In heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Hallelujah. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now, and salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death hallelujah amen, amen. amen. the Bible says over here that war broke out in heaven so when I was reading it, the first thing that I, I, I was contemplating was that, you know, what does war actually mean? When we say war, what is it about? And I was looking at the dictionary for different meanings and all of that, and I, 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 I kind of understood that war is usually between two factions, maybe two nations, two countries, two peoples. There has to be two parties, opposing parties. But not only that, Whenever war breaks out, the two parties will be armed with certain weapons. So it is like a conflict between two opposing parties, but these, these opposing parties will amass themselves with some weapons. They will carry some weapons to do battle. And you see, the Bible says that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels were fighting, and so was the dragon, the devil, Satan, and his angels. So the, the, the question is, wow, if Michael, the angel of God, the archangel of God, is fighting with his angels, could they not easily have, you know, said something and then taken the enemy somewhere? But the Bible says that there was war. When we talk about war, it is combat and battle. A fight. It's like when Apostle Paul was saying to the Ephesians that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But there is a wrestling going on. There is a constant raging. You know, there is a, 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 a fight, a combat. And each opposing party is very determined to win. But the Bible says that when the war broke out between Michael and his angels and the enemy, that Satan and his angels, the good news was that Satan did not prevail. Amen. He did not prevail. Which means that Michael and his team, they prevailed. They won. They overcame him. They were victorious in that particular battle. Amen. Which is a good thing to know. Because that is the kingdom which we have aligned ourselves to. 
We are now part of the kingdom of light. The kingdom which uh, has Michael and his angels. We are not in the kingdom of darkness. Which it involves Satan and his cohorts and his angels. So the good thing is that the victory was won in heaven. Amen. Because he could not prevail against them. When the Bible says that he could not prevail, it means that he did all that he knew how to. But yet, he was thrown short. He couldn't win. He couldn't win. Why? Because they that are with Michael and his team, they are more and they are more superior and greater than the devil. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks, you know, earlier on that when Satan fell, he fell with one third of the angels. So if one third fell with him, it means that two thirds were with Michael. Amen. So they that be for us are more than they that are against us. They that are fighting on our behalf. The angels of God on assignment, they that be for us. They that are watching over us. That are supervising our everyday activity, they are more than they that are against us. So that should let the believer know that he is in a better place, even to start with. But the Bible says that when the war broke out and Satan was was fighting with them and he could not prevail, something happened. Because he he, he was defeated. And he fell in this particular battle. There was no place found for him in heaven. I guess he did not want to leave heaven. He wanted to always have access to heaven. But the Bible says that there was no place for him in heaven. And what happened? They were cast down to the earth. That is one of the things that we need to understand. The enemy will always come in. You cannot prevent him. But... When he comes in, what we need to do is to cast him out from where he's supposed to be. Where well, we feel that, you know, this is our territory. This is our area. This is our place. My house belongs to me. My children are under my tutelage. My ministry is something that belongs to me. What you need to do is to stand and contend against him and say that, hey, you have missed the, 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 the address. It is not for you to have dominion in this particular territory. You cast him out from any place that you have authority and dominion over. Amen. So the Bible says that he was cast out onto the earth. And most of the time we ask ourselves, so if God did not have any other place to cast the enemy, why did he cast him onto the earth? Because we were here. We are here. So why is it that God did not allow him to stay in heaven, but actually allowed him to come to the earth? But, well, maybe that would be a matter of discussion for Friday evening, uh, Bible studies. But my mission this morning is to let you know that even though that the enemy found himself in the earth realm, there was a means through which God provided for the believer to always win against the enemy. Amen. So we are not supposed to be afraid of his devices, but neither are we also supposed to be ignorant of his devices. Amen. We are not supposed to be afraid, but we are not also supposed to be ignorant of his devices. Because if you are ignorant of his devices, he can take advantage of over you. And the Bible says that when he found himself in the earth realm, there were three things that the people in the earth were, were used, you know, against the enemy to win the, the, the battle, to have victory over the devil. And let's look at it from verse 11. It says that, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the final thing was that they did not love their lives unto death. When I read the scripture, I saw in it 
that these are supernatural keys that God has given unto us, believers, to always win the battle against the enemy. The blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, the blood of the Lamb. The Bible talks about the fact that because humanity sinned and none of us was able to uh, fulfill the demands of the law, we were at loggerhead. We were, you know, uh, 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 we were like enemies to God. And God decided to come in the form of Christ Jesus to reconcile us back to himself. Because God, you know God is a just God. And because God is a just God, when man sins or anybody sins, what he had in place, what he had in place as you know a reward for or the consequences of sin was that man had to die. But the Bible says that so God came in the form of man to come and die on the cross of Calvary so that he will use his blood to pacify, to cleanse our, our sins, to remove our guilt, to remove, you know, all of the past sins and all of that, to make us at peace with God. One more time. Amen. God was in Christ. And the reason why he came was to actually make sure that we are not we are no longer going to be separated from God. So he came to die on the cross of Calvary for his blood to be used as an atonement to buy us back, to redeem us from the hands of the enemy, to deliver us from you know under every dominion of the enemy. So that is what Christ did when. He came to the earth. He died on the cross of Calvary to use his blood to pay for our, our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, the Bible says that the life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. So when Jesus died, he used his life in exchange for our lives. Instead of we receiving death or instead of we getting what we deserve, which was death, he exchanged it with his life. He gave unto us life. He did not have to die, but yet he died. And when he died, he gave unto us life. Amen. Eternal life. Amen. 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 Now, by reason of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says that it paved the way. It, 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 it became the, the means through which the believer will always have victory over every activity of the enemy. Amen. You know what? As a matter of fact, when Jesus Christ came, the enemies, the, the demons, the devil recognized that this was the Son of God. But he did not have a clue as to uh, the fact that nailing him to the cross, letting him die on the cross and shedding his blood was the same means through which God was going to permanently declare his defeat. Amen. That is the reason why the Bible says that if the enemy had known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. So when they even killed Christ on the cross of Calvary, he did not know that it was the plan of God that through the shedding of his blood, it was going to be the means through which he was ever and forever going to be defeated. So when Jesus' blood was shed on the cross of Calvary, it became the means through which we are going to have victory over the enemy. Amen. So I'm here to submit unto all of us that maybe we have not been appropriating the blood of Jesus. One thing that the enemy respects and one thing that the enemy cannot stand against is when the believer begins to appropriate or apply the blood of the Lamb. Because it is through the blood that we are reconciled back to God. It is through the blood that we are brought back to God. You know, we uh, the, 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 there was a gulf, there was a gap between us and God. But when the blood was shed, that was closed. So we now have peace with God. Amen. 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 Now, 
The Bible says that when the war broke out and the enemy found himself in the earth realm, the people of God did not overcome by any other means. It was not as a result of how long they could pray. It was not as a result of any good things or any good deeds that they could, you know, uh, they could do. But it was simply attributed to the fact that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So that means that for us as believers, we need to have insight and revelation about what the blood does in the life of the believer. Amen. Because anything was not good enough to win the battle against the enemy except the blood of the Lamb. Look at it, it is very important that we look at, you know, the, the sequence in which it follows. The reason, the first reason was that it was as a result of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Because for us as believers, without the blood, we are even enemies of God. Without the blood of the Lamb, without the blood that Jesus uh, shed on the cross of Calvary, we automatically stand at the wrong side of God. But because of the blood, we have been brought in. Amen. Amen. We have come under uh, the kingdom of God. We have come into the kingdom of God. Once we become believers by trusting in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, what happens is that straight away, we are no longer under the unction or, or the, the canopy or the kingdom of the devil. We are translated into a new kingdom. So what happens is that maybe, for example, all right, in the news uh, this this week or from about two weeks ago, we've seen this whole thing about the Russian spy that was uh, uh, poisoned, and then you know there has been an ongoing diplomatic you know issue between this country and Russia and all of that. What happened was that you know this man uh, maybe had done something wrong. But he was moved, or he, 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 he traveled from one country and came under the authority or the covering of another country. But here is the case that the country that he ran away from was able to, uh, you know, scheme to come and get him, even though that he had moved under their sovereignty, their sovereign place. But that cannot be said about us, the believer. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, 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 of light, into the kingdom of light, his dear son, the kingdom of light. So it means that once we have switched allegiance, when the enemy wants us, he has to be able to penetrate through the security apparatus of the kingdom of life, which is impossible. Because the enemy is no longer allowed to come or have access into the kingdom of life. He cannot be go there. He can't go there. Why? Because the blood is now speaking for the believer. The blood of the Lamb is speaking for the believer all the time. The Bible says that the accuser of the brethren stood before God day and night accusing them before God. But I believe that that was before the time of Jesus' death. The enemy could have access. We read about it in Job. That the enemy went, presented himself before God and said, you know, there was a discourse between God and Job. Have you considered my servant Job and all of those things? And we hear that, you know, well, the enemy was accusing you. Do you think that Job is serving you for nothing? It's as a result of what you've put around him and all of those things. Now, I believe that because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary, because we have been redeemed, because we have been brought back, because we have been washed and cleansed, there is no more accusation. There is no more condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So when the, the enemy is not even granted any access to go and stand before God to accuse you, the believer. I believe this, this strongly, that because of the speaking power of the blood, which is always speaking mercy, which is always speaking, uh, 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 you know, protection, speaking the grace of God upon the life of the believer, no, it is not possible, not possible for the devil to go and accuse us before God. 
Look at it. Any time that the enemy was able to accuse people, it was under the old covenant before Jesus Christ. We read about you know what happened between Zachariah, the, the priest, the high priest in Zachariah. All of these things happened before the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross of Calvary. So the Bible says that when the war broke out, the people on the earth, they were able to overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus. And by the word of their testimony. They were able to overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. I am here just to highlight things to you. That there is something, there is, there is a key which God has given unto us. There is a provision made by God. For us to always win any battle against the kingdoms of darkness. There is a means through which the believer is always going to be victorious and become an overcomer. Amen. Against any activity of the enemy. Amen. And the means is through your application of the blood. Amen. Your access to the blood. Amen. For you pleading the blood of the Lamb over your life. Amen. You know what? One thing that I've come to realize is that. Often believers talk about the blood of Jesus during Easter time. So after Easter, there is no mention about the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't use it in prayer. You don't appropriate it when you know you you come under satanic attack. But the Bible says that when the enemy found himself on the earth, he saw that. His time was very short. So he came to the earth with great wrath to actually do whatever he has to take advantage over the people that are living on the earth. And there was a means through which we were going to permanently put him into silence, which is by pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, the night before, the people of Israel were about to leave the land of Egypt. The Bible says, this instruction was given. I want you to go and kill a lamb. And use the blood of the lamb to mark your doorposts. Amen. Amen. And when surely they did that, God allowed the, 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 the angel of death to walk through the, the land of Egypt that particular night. And this was what the word of the Lord says. God said, your only means of protection, your only means of victory, the only means through which you are going to be protected from the enemy of darkness touching your house is for you to apply the blood of the Lamb. So in other words, if you apply, you come under the blood of the Lamb, the enemy cannot touch you. Anything that he releases against you, it is going to be minus you. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against any advances of the enemy. The Bible says that I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail over it. Why? Because the church is the called out ones. How were they called out? They have been called out because the precious blood of Jesus is speaking for them. When the blood speaks for you, when you come under the blood, the enemy cannot touch you. You will see whatever thing that the enemy is up to. But it is always going to end up to your advantage and to your glory. Hallelujah. Have you not read in Psalm 91, he that dwells under the secret place of the Most High God. What is the secret place? Coming under the blood. Coming under the blood. It is in the blood that you come under the covering of the Lord. So he that dwells under the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is no better place than this particular place. Mm -hmm. To be in the shelter of the Most High. Come under the blood. When you wake up, bleed the blood over your life. Bleed the blood over anything that concerns you, any area of your life. Bleed the blood of the Lamb over your marriage. Bleed the blood over, over your children. We have been talking about, you know, how gangs are taking over our children. 
gangs are taking over our communities and all of that. We need to now stand in the gap and begin to plead the blood of the Lamb over our communities. Amen. For when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The, the, the gang members, all of the people associated with, 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 with this menace, all of them, when they come in contact with the blood, they will be permanently put on silence. Amen. We have seen people that have risen from tower blocks. You know, I'm talking about very dangerous communities and very dangerous areas and estates. People have been raised up in such an environment and yet they have not fallen victim to these things. So what I'm saying is this. We might not have answers to all of the problems. And by the way, this is inspired by the devil. It is an oppression of demons. They take and invade countries. They take and invade communities. You know demons, when they come, they want to take authority over that particular and drive people to destruction. These are activities of demons. And what we as believers are fundamentally required by God to do is not to try and understand why this thing has happened. All that he has asked us to do is to come and announce who is in charge of a particular authority, a particular place. When we come, we come to contend against any opposition and we march them out. We come to cast them out. That is what Jesus will do. When Jesus comes into a particular arena where maybe, you know, somebody's life has been taken advantage or taken hold by the devil, he doesn't come to actually begin to analyze the cause. Why has this thing happened? What caused this? What happened? And all of those things. He will come and announce that, you know what? As from today, the kingdom of God has come into this particular place. Amen. Believers are now supposed to rise up and begin to announce the kingdom of God in our areas of, you know, our, our jurisdictions, our areas of influence. When you come to, when we come to your house, you have command over that particular territory. Yes. You have to rise up and say that, hey, my children are present. You have to say that any advantage that it might seem that the enemy is having against or over my children, by reason of the blood, yes. devil, you need to let them go. Amen. You need to let them lose them and let them go. Amen. This will be an end of your reign. Your end is now. Amen. Begin to appropriate the power in the blood. Amen. This is a key. The Bible says that for my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people have gone into captivity because they did not have knowledge or they did not have understanding. What the enemy always wants is that you begin to rationalize everything. Instead of rising up and contending against the enemy, you begin to rationalize it. But you know what? When demons are involved, no amount of words will be able to do anything except you are speaking the words of the Lord. Because that's the second supernatural key. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. 